This is the final tutorial for chapter 12 and what I hope to, to accomplish here is to uh, combine the encoding of the container format and the codec in a very very practical way uh, that you may be able to relate to. Many people will create a video project and want to upload it to an online video hosting service such as YouTube and Vimeo. And if I go to my uh, web browser, I've logged on to a page here that is at Vimeo's hosting site that provides uh, help with the compression guidelines for the video before you upload it to Vimeo. This is important for a number of reasons. If I jump over to my finder window, my 16 minute video that I created in Avid Media Composer and I exported it in its native format, in other words it's a full HD 1920 by 1080 video uncompressed. The file size is 17.96 gigabytes. This is really large and it's too big to be uploaded to most video hosting services. My Vimeo account gives me a limit of 500 megabytes per week. So I really want to try to get the file size down under that cap if at all possible. So if I go back over to Vimeo and to their uh, guidelines I can see here that they've listed the guidelines in various categories. They're identifying first of all the codec that they recommend is H.264. This is not the container file format. The container file format is going to be MPEG-4. If we jump over to YouTube's site, they're a little bit more correct with their language. On their site, they list the container as MPEG-4 and they list the video codec as H.264. And this is technically the correct way to do it. The container is going to be an MPEG-4 container and the video bit streams are going to be encoded using the H.264 video codec which is the de facto standard right now for video in nearly every circle for distribution. So I'll jump back over to Vimeo, we'll look at some of the other settings. They suggest a frame rate of 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. Our video was shot using the broadcast standard 30 frames per second. It's technically 29.97, but we'll go ahead and stick with that. It also talks down here about keyframes. If you have an option to set the keyframes, uh, the Vimeo site recommends that you use the same uh, number for both the frame rate and for the number of keyframes. And you don't really have to understand what this means so much as just being able to translate these instructions into the form field that you're going to be prompted to use when you export your video from your nonlinear editing system. A really important variable is data rate. And for standard definition videos, Vimeo recommends a data rate of 2000 kbps. And this has to do with both the quality, the resolution of the image, and the ability of that image to stream to the end user across the internet. The higher the data rate, the more bandwidth is going to be required by the user to download the video and to stream it live without there being some sort of network buffering uh, problem where the video hiccups. If you've ever watched online videos sometimes you'll it'll play for a while and then it'll stop while more of the bits traveling down the pipeline of the internet go into a buffer before it begins playing again. So this data rate setting will increase the quality of the video but if you set it too high it may also uh, create more uh, buffering problems for users that have a low bandwidth internet connection. Resolution has to do with the frame size of the video and Vimeo recommends for standard definition television a frame rate of 640 by 480 and for high definition 1280 by 720. Uh, the 720 scaled down version of HD is going to uh, render out on screen a lot faster. The, it's just not going to be as large of a file and so the end user again will have a more pleasing experience without the video uh, starting and stopping because of the inability of the user's internet connection to keep up with the data flow of the bits coming down the pipeline. And the last option here has to do with deinterlacing, uh, de and this is optional. You can deinterlace, you can choose not to. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and deinterlace. And then there's some settings for the audio portion. The audio will be encoded separately from the video, and most online services recommend using advanced audio codec uh, for that. And here's some information about the data rates and the sample rate and this looks very familiar, 44.1 kilohertz. So I'm going to jump over to my Avid editing program and I've finished my project. It's 16 minutes long. 
Uh, in its native uncompressed format, the file size is huge. It's 16 gigabytes. So I want to re-export this in a more web-friendly way, making the file size smaller and yet retaining as much quality as possible so that the online presentation isn't compromised. I don't want people to see a substandard presentation of something that I've worked so hard to accomplish. So trying to uh, use the highest values possible while preserving the smallest file size is going to be my best option. So I'm going to go up to File and this option in most NLEs is going to be located under the file menu and you should see some option for exporting your video and I'm going to choose export and uh, some prosumer programs and even some some professional programs now even give you uh, these really simple sharing options where you can export your video for Vimeo for YouTube and the program will take care of filling in all of the uh, the values for the various fields that need to be completed. So a lot of the softwares are getting more more sophisticated. Uh, people who work within these programs professionally tend to prefer to have more control over uh, the individual settings. So doing it manually, uh, there's something to be said for that. It's certainly uh, a learning experience to be able to understand if I change this value here under bitrate, what effect that might have in terms of file size and overall quality when somebody streams the video uh, from an online service. All right, so I'm going to choose the QuickTime Movie uh, parent container. It's going to actually have a .mpeg4 uh, extension or m4v extension when we're all finished, so that will be the container. And I'm going to choose options to bring up the properties for how to encode the video into that container. And if I leave this option here set to the default same as source then I'm going to end up with a really really large 16 gigabyte plus file which is what I have as my original and I don't mind keeping that it's always good to keep a high quality full uncompressed .mov version of your file as a high resolution archival copy of the project but in this particular case I want to choose custom because I do want to downsample this and I want to make this into a more web friendly encoded format. And once I choose custom, I have this option over here now on the right called format options. And I'm going to select that. And this is going to open up a second window that allows me to control the video properties of the encoded uh, MPEG-4 H.264 video and the audio settings. And so under video and under settings, I'm going to select this tab. And this is where I get to choose my codec. Again, remember the container format is MPEG-4, but the codec is H.264, and I'm going to leave that set there. My frame rate, it's choosing current, which simply means it will keep the frame rate native to how the project was created. My best bet is to go ahead and leave it set to current. I happen to know that it's 2997, so under keyframes, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 30. I'll just ramp it up a little bit because Vimeo recommends that the frame rate and the keyframes be set to the same. Under the compressor, I'm going to choose best quality. And down here under encoding, I'm going to also choose the best quality, which is multi-pass versus single pass. Whenever you see uh, multi-pass and single pass, and there's some other variations of this, uh, what this simply means is that if I've selected multi-pass, the computer is going to read my video from beginning to end, all 16 minutes of my video project. And it's going to go through it and it's going to analyze it for movement, motion within the screen, for complexity. And it's going to vary the bit rate based on its analysis. So if I'm, uh, my video has to do with car racing and there's a lot of movement and a lot of complex things going on in the background, then the compressor is going to add or increase the, the bit rate during those uh, scenes where there's a lot of movement. And in other scenes where the movement is less, uh, it will reduce it. And so it will do this variable bit rate adjustment. So I always recommend using multi-pass because this gives the computer the opportunity to evaluate and to analyze your video prior to actually performing the compression and the encoding. Uh, it takes longer, and it even tells you here that you know, I can choose a faster encoding method that's single-pass, but just keep in mind that the computer won't have as much data to work with if you use single pass because it will uh, not have the ability to analyze the project ahead of time. And that's all I'm going to set in this particular setting. I'll choose OK. 
I'm going to go into the size option under video and this is where I can choose the frame size and right now I have it set to uh, to downsample the frame size from its native frame size of 1920 by 1080 to 1280 by 720. That will preserve the 16 by 9 aspect ratio so I'm going to leave that set there and I will choose to deinterlace at this point and choose OK. All right, once you're happy with the video settings, you can then go into the sound settings and choose the options that you want there. Under sound settings, linear PCM would be my normal uncompressed audio. Uh, according to Vimeo's recommended settings, we should use AAC instead. So I'm going to change that to AAC. We'll leave stereo set to stereo. We'll leave the sample rate set to 44.1 kilohertz. And then down here under the advanced settings, I'm going to choose best. And under the target bit rate, I'm going to choose 320. That was, again, the recommendation from the Vimeo website. And when I'm finished with the audio settings, happy with those, I'll choose OK. And when I'm all finished, I'll choose save, and it will begin the encoding process. Now, when I did this originally, it took a really long time, so I'm not going to perform it again but merely jump over to my finder window where I can show you the finished product. And here in the finder window we have our original movie file. And if I zoom in on this you can see that the size of the original file was a whopping 17.96 gigabytes, roughly 18 gigabytes. My transcoded MPEG-4 H.264 version is 329.9 megabytes, a much more web-friendly, appropriately sized and encoded video for distribution through a video hosting service such as YouTube or Vimeo. And if I go to play this, it looks really good. It has been said that success always comes when preparation meets opportunity. And there's my finished version. And that in a nutshell is how you go about encoding video for uploading to an online video hosting service such as YouTube or Vimeo.